Hey there and welcome back to my Chanel. My name is Georgina and I'm the Honest Vocal Coach and today is Tribute Tuesday. Now in this tribute I am going to be looking at the phenomenal Karen Carpenter. I am a huge fan. I've listened to many of their albums, although I think their greatest hits is the one I've listened to the most. I've seen films about her and I have studied her in great detail. Her voice just melts my soul. Karen Ann Carpenter was born on March the 2nd in 1950 and passed away on February 4th, 1983. She was an American singer and drummer who, with her elder brother Richard, performed as the duo The Carpenters. With a distinctive three-octave contralto vocal range, her struggle with and eventual death from anorexia would later raise awareness of eating disorders and body dysmorphia. Karen was born in New Haven, Connecticut and moved to Downey, California in 1963 with her family. She began to study the drums in high school and joined the Long Beach State Choir after graduating. After several years of touring and recording, the Carpenters were signed to A&M Records in 1969, achieving enormous commercial and critical success throughout the 1970s. Initially, Carpenter was the band's full-time drummer, but she gradually took the role of front woman as her drumming was reduced to a handful of live showcases on tracks and albums. While the Carpenters were on a hiatus in the late 1970s, she recorded a solo album which was released years after her death. At the age of 32, Karen Carpenter died of heart failure due to complications from anorexia nervosa which was a little known thing at the time and her death led to increased visibility and awareness of eating disorders. Interest in her life and death has spawned numerous documentaries and movies. Her work continues to attract praise, including appearing on Rolling Stone's 2010 list of the greatest singers of all time. So let's take a look at the top five selling songs from The Carpenters. Number five is Close To You, a song I have sung so many times at gigs. I adore this one. I do birds suddenly appear. Close To You was written by Burt Bacharach and Hal David, originally recorded in 1963 by an actor called Richard Chamberlain. It was later recorded by Dionne Warwick in 1964, who knew? And in 1967, Dusty Springfield recorded it. It appeared on their album Close To You and as a single it reached number one in 1970. Number four, I Won't Last a Day Without You, written by Roger Nichols and Paul Williams. I can take all the madness the world. It was released as a single in 1974 and peaked at 11 on the Hot 100 and number one on the Easy Listening chart. The song was an album track on the 1972 record A Song For You. Number three, Goodbye to Love, written by Richard Carpenter and John Bettis. The song went to number seven on the Hot 100 and the song appears on the 1972 album A Song For You. Okay, we're getting to some of my favourites now. Number two, Rainy Days and Mondays, written by Roger Nichols and Paul Williams. It was released as the first track on the 1971 album called Carpenters. The song peaked at only number two on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. So finally, number one, we've only just begun. The Carpenters first heard an edited version of this song in a television commercial for a bank in California in the winter of 1970. Richard Carpenter selected the composition for the duo's third single and included it on the 1970 LP Close To You. The track rose to number two on the Billboard Hot 100 and stayed at number one on the adult contemporary chart for seven weeks. The song also helped them win two Grammy Awards in 1971 for the Best New Artist. In 1998, the recording was inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame for recordings of lasting quality or historical significance. 
So today I have chosen to react to Superstar, one of my absolute favourite songs by The Carpenters. Although, to be quite honest with you, as long as she's singing it, I don't care. I'm quite happy to listen to every single song that she sung on. Her voice has so much depth, so much emotion. Wow. Let's dive in. <laughs> That depth, it's just truly outstanding. The breath control is superb. And also that vibrato is just gentle. It's not too much, it's just right. I fell in love with you Before the second show Do you hear an ever so slight short tongue there on the second show, really over pronouncing those S's, which makes me wonder that there may have been a short tongue, but you can definitely hear that there's a shortness of that S there. Your guitar, it sounds so sweet. He has this wonderful way of sliding the notes, but you're not really here. There's lots of slides which really adds to this. It's just the radio. Don't you remember you told me you love me, baby? You said you'd be coming back this way again, baby. Baby, 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 baby. It's just so flawless. This is a live performance. It's superb. Your baby. I love that vocal fry, I really do. It's very low for me. Always struggled singing the Carpenter stuff. Over the years, I've been able to get a little bit lower and closer, close to you, but not right on those low notes. So if I ever do a cover by the Carpenters, I think I'm gonna have to raise it up a bit. Loneliness is such a sad affair. I just love the way that she pushes into some of those notes and pulls back, changing the volume levels. Gorgeous. And I can hardly wait. Do you notice how she goes over there? It's not wait. She goes over the top away. So it's easier for her to sort of have that agility in it. To be with you again. The dynamics are just stunning. The power in the what to say to make you just those volume levels just brilliant. Come back to me again and play your sad guitar. moment throughout all of this where you can tell that it's live because as she's moving her body you can hear that shake in the breath control but the rest of it is flawless don't you remember you told me you love me baby It's on the baby, 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 how she starts to place it forward. Yeah, 
I am such a fan. Karen Carpenter will always be one of my greatest inspirations. It's just superb. The emotive quality that she had in her voice was just wonderful. It's so sad to know that she passed away early and she could have had so much more opportunity to spread that amazing voice around the world. But she will be forever remembered. Such a stunning voice. Thank you for watching this one. I hope you enjoyed it. If there's any other great performances by her you would like me to react to, let me know. Mm -hmm.